Hello, welcome to Inflorescence. My name is Tor Golholm, and today we will be repotting my brand new Sansevieria masoniana. Um, this is a plant in the genus Sansevieria. It's one of my favorite plant genuses of all time because they are so simple, so straightforward, and so easy. Um, this particular Sansevieria is really popular on Instagram because it gets sold as these little whale fin shaped cuttings and it's just one leaf in a pot. It looks really stoic and exotic, but I really like this specimen because as you can tell, we have multiple points of growth, some a little bit less attractive than others, but I think we can take care of that today. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. Alrighty, so before we jump into all of this business, um, I first want to point out a few of the products that we're going to be using today. Some are necessary and some are just my preference. Um, to start, I'm going to show, this is a little unexpected, but isopropyl alcohol. I use this as a disinfectant for my scissors when I am pruning. Uh, a lot of like germs and bacteria can get transferred between snipping all my little plants. So I like to use this just to keep it sterile and clean. Next, we have rooting hormone powder. Um, sometimes I like to sprinkle this in the soil just to encourage root growth with new plants. It also can be used in propagation, which is something else we might do today. I also have cinnamon powder. I don't know if this is actually a thing that works, but a lot of people that I know that propagate plants, especially deserty type plants, will use cinnamon powder as an antifungal and anti disinfectant, or not anti, but just a straight up dis disinfectant for their plants when they're making little cuts and wounds on the root system or the fleshy, leafy parts. We also have our pot, just a standard ceramic pot. And yes, it has a little bit of drainage in there. <laughs> um, we also have some standard houseplant potting soil. We have some standard, very plain and boring perlites. And this is just for aesthetical reasons when I like to have this, but it is pumice. I like to put this on the top of the pot just to make it look a little bit more natural. And sphagnum moss. I may use this today, I may not. We're, we're gonna see what, what looks best. And that's it, that's all that we got. So to get started, uh, we're gonna take an assessment of this plant to see what condition it's in and maybe plan out uh, what sort of things we need to do to get this thing ready for a potting. I got this guy at Gertens. It's a cute little plant store in Portland. And normally I like most of their products. So I'm looking forward to seeing what condition this guy's in. So first we're gonna gently, now it's a little bit loose because my cat knocked it over the other night. Pull up and loosen the dirt a little bit just to make sure that we're not ripping any of these leaves off. And we're gonna just pull and spill it out onto the soil. Let's hope we don't get dirt everywhere. So it was not very root bound. Uh, I'd say like half of the dirt in the soil stayed in the pot. As you can see, we have just a shallow root system. so. It's not a very well-developed plant, but it looks like it's in pretty good condition. If you look here, we have a nice healthy root system. Uh, I don't see any signs of root rot. I do see that these roots are a little bit tangled. So I almost wonder if this was potted in a smaller pot and then when it was put in this store, it may have actually gotten transplanted, but it doesn't really matter. It looks like it's in good health, so not too worried. As you can see, we have these long leggy growths. I am not a big fan of this. I, I think that this little light green sort of slender growth occurred because the plant was kept in dark conditions when it was in the store. I know that this plant in particular was in the shop for a long time. Uh, this one also has a little bit of a crack right there if you can't see and although sometimes that's not an issue i think that we're going to actually be pruning off these smaller green growths and just work with this nice beautiful dark hard mature growth so what we're going to do is we're going to set this puppy down and we're going to dig in here just to see where all this is connected Alrighty, we have a nice little view of the rhizome right there. I think we're going to make a little bit of a snip right here on this guy. 
We're gonna be taking our alcohol and a tissue. Just gonna dump it like that. Get this a little bit damp. I'm gonna wipe off my scissors. Should be good enough. I'm, I'm normally not too concerned about plants, but I always like to recommend cleaning your tools before you get a snip in and we're just gonna make a little bit of a cut right there. And there we go, we have it off. I'm gonna set this aside and probably propagate it. I'm going to take my little bit of cinnamon powder and I'm just gonna dabble that on my finger like this. I'm just gonna pat that onto the little cut and that should just help with any potential infections or diseases that this might be susceptible to. I don't know a lot about diseases for St. Severius, so I'm not really aware of what to look out for, but they're pretty hardy plant genus, so I'm not too concerned. All right, we're gonna do the next right over here. We're gonna dig in there and, oh. Oh, and it looks like this one is more closely attached to the tuber. So St. Severius form a giant root, oh. Oh, I may have just snapped it, uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh see that's probably a sign that this was a little bit of a weak leggy growth yep there we go oh dear santiverius form a tuber uh and a really complex root system through which they send out these little shoots um it's a common trait for a lot of plants in this uh in the family that santiverius are in okay we're gonna go to the last piece the big boy over here oh is this a new okay well there's a pleasant surprise. We have a new shoot coming in right here, actually, at the very base. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that's exciting. We'll see if that turns out to be some leggy growth or if we can get that to develop properly since now we have a little bit more of a well-lit condition for it. Okay, so we're gonna take our scissors. We're gonna find a good point to cut. I think right about the tuber there. And snip. Oh, there we go. Off and away. <laughs> All right, we're gonna grab the cinnamon powder once more and we're going to dabble and dabble and dabble. It's kind of like baking, just adding little spices and ingredients to it. I'm gonna say in overall, this looks like it's in good health. I think that these specimens are doing pretty well. Aside from that leggy growth, uh, it looks like we're going to have a final time repotting this bad boy. So this is the pot we're gonna be using, standard ceramic pot. Has some drainage, looks beautiful and nice. We're gonna take our plant very carefully so we don't spill dirt all over my carpet. And I'm just gonna set it in here just to get a little look and see how I want it to sit and rest in this pot. I like to pot my plants just only a little, well, depending on the plant. For Sansevieria, I like to pot it just a little bit bigger than what it was in. If you leave too much room and too much soil around the root system of these guys, they tend to get root rot, which is something that I want to avoid at all costs. So we're gonna mix up our soil. We just have some standard organic soil here. We have some good old perlite. Because these plants are desert plants and typically live in arid environments, uh, they like to have lots of ventilation in the root system. And although this pot has some nice drainage, I think we're going to need a little bit more just because it has a fine glaze on it. A little bit more ventilation won't hurt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some of this perlite. It looks like a lot, I know, but bear with me. Now, now that we have all this perlite, we're going to add some soil to the mix. It may be a little bit odd to see this much perlite in relation to this much dirt, um, but because we want to have as much ventilation for this root system as, uh, not as possible, but as we can afford for a pot like this and a setup like this, uh, I like to make sure that I have the excess of perlite laid out first and then lay the dirt on top of it and mix it up as I go. I can always just push some of this perlite aside uh, from the actual mix that will go into the pot if I don't want it, but I think that we have a good amount here So I'm just gonna stir All right, we're just gonna take some of this we're gonna plop it on down here Just gonna fill it a little bit 
give it a little bit whack to get all the loose soil out of that drainage hole. I always hate it when drainage uh, uh, holes leak dirt everywhere whenever you set the pot down. So giving it a good old whack just shakes it up and gets everything moving. There we go. We're at about that level with the dirt. So I think it's about time to set our Sansevieria in. All right, I'm gonna dig down a little impression, set it in there. And bam, okay. Oh gosh, that's just beautiful. I love that. Next, we're just gonna pile some of this leftover dirt on top. Repotting can be a little bit of a haphazard process, so. Not everything has to be done perfectly or the same way each time. Every plant, every pot, every situation is different, so. Always keep that in mind. For those of you potting less desert plants at home, you might want to use less perlite uh, in your soil mix in case you have a terracotta pot, just because then the plant might dry out a little bit too fast for its liking if it's some moisture loving fern or tropical orchid of some sort, you never know. It looks like we just need a little bit more. I'm just going to pull a little bit of straight dirt out of the bag here. Two scoops should be fine. Handful of perlite. This is a little bit darker and probably has a little bit less perlite than the last little batch of soil that I had, but it's fine. It's just going on the top of the plant, so it should be okay. Not too worried about this guy not having enough ventilation. Sansevierias are very hardy plants, which is why I love them and recommend them to so many people. Although I haven't cared for this kind of Sansevieria before, so we will see how it turns out. I'll, I'll keep you guys posted. And again, I like to just tap this. It really, it's quite odd. It kind of looks like you're spanking the pot. I know that's a weird concept, but <laughs> I like it because it evens out the soil and gets it all moving. And there we go, that is all the dirt. At this point, you can just leave it and you can just have your own little potted plant and have it be fine and dandy. I like to add some finishing touches, but we'll get into that in just one more moment. So for this last part, I like to just add some little pebbles and some moss on top. I like to add these two things just to make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more natural. See that? I'm gonna take some of this pumice. I'm just gonna scatter that gently on there. It looks a little bit better than perlite, which is why I like to use this. Uh, perlite is very, very white. This is more gray and adds more of a sandy texture to the soil. And we're gonna grab some sphagnum moss. We're just gonna include a little pinch of it. It just looks like organic debris to me and gives it more of that natural look. Not that plants have to look natural. Sometimes a plant in a really funky planter can be a lot more interesting, but for this guy, we're gonna go the own natural look. It almost looks like hay. <laughs> and there we go. Last but not least, I have this little fossilized rock that has some cute little cool fossils on it. I like to put stones in with my potted plants just because a lot of a lot of gardeners think that they're kind of lucky or they bring good energy or whatnot. I just have a sentimental attachment to this rock, so. I figured it would be fitting with one of my new loved and enjoyable plants. Let's see, I'm gonna make sure it's tucked in. I may have to take it out if the Sansevieria decides to put up any tubers that shoot underneath it, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's always a risk when you're putting things in pots that the root system's gonna shoot up growth that gets trapped underneath it, but hasn't happened to me yet, so. And that's it. We have our potted up Sansevieria Masoniana. Something I forgot to mention was the rooting hormone powder. This plant had a nice root system and it would have been a little bit of overkill to use some of this stuff with this baby. But uh, despite that, we will be using this rooting hormone powder to propagate some of these leaves. So we'll see if we can't make a few more plants, maybe give them to friends and stuff. It's something I always like to do, so yeah. We'll see how that turns out. 
Well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you being here for this repotting video. Um, please, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, leave them down in the comment section. And we hope to see you again here on Inflorescence. Thanks again. Bye. <laughs>